one of the talking points that gets repeated over and over is that um, Islam is a religion of peace and love. And I don't know if you've heard uh, Professor Gad Saad speak on this. He had a really good episode with um, Masi. Oh, what was her name? Masi Elena Judd. No, the one I listened to was um, uh, what something Bin Laden. Her last oh, Noor, Noor Bin Noor. Laden. Yeah. yeah, it was great. It was probably two years ago now, but it was a really great episode. And I guess he also is Arabic, like he speaks yeah. Arabic, and he can read it for what it is. And he was breaking down points in um, in the Quran. And he's like, no, it verbatim says this. And it is not that it, it, it's people that choose to live peacefully and kind of take this religion into an enlightenment that the majority um, of other religions have gone through. So, you know, obviously in the Bible, it says, you know, gay people are the worst thing ever and you're going to go to hell forever and um, it's OK to have slaves. Obviously, you would be very hard pressed to find a Christian that's like, oh, yeah, we should hold on to that because it's in the book. They're like, no, yeah. that's wrong. It was wrong then. It's wrong now. Let's, um, you know, have that enlightenment era for our religion. I'm still a Christian, but I'm not going to practice these things. And I'd imagine that's, you know, most Muslims. It's like, OK, well, we're going to not enla- not most. It, not it, most. There, there's a huge discrepancy there between like the amount of Christians that don't follow their book verbatim like they're not fundamentalists Mm -hmm. um so that percentage is like your fundamentalists are much smaller than your mainstream christians who are just nominally christian um whereas with with the muslim population you flip that around okay so the the majority of them are living in muslim majority countries living under islamic law being educated um with islamic education like it's they're they're immersed in it. Mm. Those Muslims who are living in the West, uh, America, Britain, Canada, yada, yada, they have the ability, the freedom to not practice their religion. Uh, Like you said, they can choose to practice whatever parts of their religion they want to practice and put whatever other parts they don't want to practice to the side because they're living in free countries that allow them to do that. Okay. No, that makes sense because now I'm remembering another poll. I was like trying to watch as much information as I could. So I came into this as informed as possible, but it was when they had done a poll when I believe a cartoonist was murdered um, over in the UK and it was something like 80% of people polled were like, yeah, that was right. That was justified. Murder was justified in that scenario. And they believe um, execution still for gays. Like that makes sense. Like it was just like these, obviously it's not legal there, but it was polling. Um, And that was kind of alarming to me because you have these debates around immigration and I don't know the solution. I know that no matter where you're coming from, you should be vetted somehow. Um, But then you have these people and I'm sure it's the far it's left left it's not you know I don't want to just generalize the entire left because I know that's not the case but there is a portion of the left that is like absolute open borders no screening Mm -hmm. like we should just open our borders to everyone with open arms and I'm like well that doesn't make sense either because when you see these polls that's pretty scary because that's not our beliefs in the West. Like we don't believe we believe in freedom of expression, um, freedom to love who you want to love, freedom um, over your body. Like these things are important to us. And if you have too many people coming in that don't believe those things, I worry how long until that shifts because nothing is permanent. You just it's the majority rules or the mob rules. So you do have to say, like, if you want to be here, you have to agree on our values just on a basic level, right? Respect for other people's um, autonomy, essentially. I 100% agree with you. Um, and there are some countries like Austria and I think Sweden as well that have, like, it's so nominal. It's not even worth mentioning, though. Like, they have to do, like, 24 hours of civics education, basically, where they learn about like you mentioned, like what are the values of this society that you are joining? Um, and so then they, they learn things about what is free speech? What is, you know, um, women's and men's equality? What is, 
LGBT equality, what is for, you know, whatever it is, like all of these different values that they are not familiar with um, and that they need to know these are the values of the country that you're entering. And if you do not agree or if you do not abide by these values, Mm -hmm. then you're not welcome to stay here. And that's the only way it can be done. It's that's the only solution. And, you know, there's a lot of like shortcuts, like, you know, uh, when Trump was in power, he was trying to do it like by country. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was really opposed to that because my organization, Free Hearts, Free Minds, is all about supporting people living in Muslim majority countries who are free thinkers and who are living amongst people that want to kill them. Um, So I know that there are, you can't go by country because we're individuals at the end of the day. And we have, it has to be an individual thing. And there's, there's no shortcut, unfortunately, I think. And people say things like, oh, people can lie. They can pretend. First of all, (laughs) they don't even know to lie. (laughs) Like they don't even know, like it, it's, Let me try and give it to you in a like sort of Ilhan Omar. You know how she's done so many slip ups with anti Semitism? She doesn't know that those are slip ups because that's so much a part of the narrative that she's heard her entire life. She doesn't even realize that it's anti Semitic to use these tropes. Got it. You know? Um, So it's like that. Like, sure, people can lie. Of course they can lie. They can try to pretend. But if you have a, a proper interview where you talk to people and you ask them questions and you just dig a little deeper it it's gonna you're gonna be able to tell um you know where this person's thoughts are what what are their values and that's what we have to do we just have to do that before you invite people into your homes right you have to let them know like this is this is our home this is how we live here you're well, you know, you're welcome to join us, but this is, these are our values. Um, and I don't know another way that you could do it. I mean, unfortunately, what you mentioned about open borders, yes, it is a very small minority that do believe that, but the reality is that's happened already. That happened once Germany flung open its doors um, and let in millions of migrants from all over the world claiming to be from Syria. They don't stay in Germany, <laughs> right? There's open borders in Europe, and now they're everywhere. And now all of Europe has a big problem on its hands. You, you let in people that didn't have anything keeping them at home, that they could just, they were mostly young men, between the ages of like 18 and 25 or something like that, they'd have to be like unemployed, like nothing keeping them at home. These are just, these. this is the worst of society. The people that can just be like, yeah, I'm just going to go. Um, and if, if, it, if they actually were refugees from Syria, then of course, you know, mm-hmm. we would want to help people as much as we can, especially Yazidis, you know, people taking, being made into sex slaves or child soldiers, like, yes, let's open our doors and let these people in and give them refuge. But the problem was we opened the door and just let every random Tom, Dick and Harry in. And now nobody even knows which way is up. And that is the truth in so many different areas is which way is up. 